the Williams family wanted closure, uh, and sometimes justice and closure is not the same thing at the same time. And so I knew in the back of my mind that uh, if there was an opportunity to plead the case, we might would take it. As you know, this defendant uh, came into court on several occasions and said he wanted to plead guilty. The man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend while she was on Facebook Live is back in court today. NBC Six's Delano Henry joins us now from Studio Control with details. Delano? That's right, Jackie. Jonathan Robinson went haywire in court again today. Robinson tried to speak before his arraignment, but Judge Ramona Emanuel told him he had to speak through his attorney. Then when the indictment charging him with first-degree murder, the April death of Renita Williams was read, a sobbing Robinson cried out, I killed her, as he tried to push away deputies standing next to him. It took eight deputies to toggle and wrestle him to the ground. When he finally was restrained, his Baton Rouge lawyer, who only enrolled today, entered a not guilty plea and also entered not guilty pleas on six attempts first degree murder charges and vandalism charges. Now, since the district attorney decided to go for the death penalty, it has taken six months to find Robinson a qualified lawyer. The first hearing will be on February 6th. In closing out this Jonathan Robinson case, I thought it only fair that I close it out appropriately. Not when I'm in a bad mood and I come to this channel and I take out my frustrations from my other channel on my viewers on this channel. Even though the bulk of the people on this channel were haters, I did have a few people that actually were fans. So I thought it only fitting to close this out uh, accordingly. And I also have to decide what I'm going to end up doing with this channel. I have so many ideas, but I've come up with an idea. Um, I found another case that I'm going to be covering, and I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to do it right this time. I'm going to have it based more on a documentary type opinion type Uh, coverage as opposed to strictly opinion it's going to be more documentary based uh, but anyway in closing out this case uh, I am happy with the way that the case ended I am glad that the family has closure <laughs> Guilty of first-degree murder. That's the unexpected and shocking plea deal accepted by Jonathan Robinson, the so-called Facebook Live killer. He took that deal this afternoon in a Cato Parish courtroom. Well, he no longer faces the death penalty for shooting and killing Renita Williams, a mother of three young children. Robinson will spend the rest of his life in prison. I am glad that Renita Williams has justice. KSLA Chief Investigator Reporter Stacy Cameron was in court this afternoon, and Stacy, it was an emotional day for the victim's family, especially Renita Williams' mother. Dominique, it absolutely was, and right after Robinson pleaded guilty to one count of first-degree murder and seven counts of attempted murder of a police officer, he was immediately sentenced, and that's when Renita Williams, Anita's mother, began to, or Anita Williams began to cry deeply. You see, it was nine months ago that Robinson was shot and killed Renita, and he streamed that murder of his ex-girlfriend live on Facebook. Then during an hours long standoff with police, he turned his gun and fired on Shreveport police officers, injuring one and facing the death penalty. Robinson didn't get a lawyer certified to defend a death penalty case until November. And since that time, Cattle Parish District Attorney James Stewart has been meeting with the Williams family who said they wanted closure. So earlier this week, Stewart offered Robinson a plea deal, life in prison, no parole, no probation, no suspension of his sentence, and he'll serve hard labor plus another 100 years after pleading guilty to attempting to murder those seven police officers. Robinson actually tried apologizing to Renita's mom, Anita, in court after getting sentenced. And I am glad that Jonathan Robinson did not get the death penalty this wasn't the first time he apologized to me. It's about the third time with letters and writing. I just never let no one know what was going on with me. And I, I, I forgive him. All across the board, 
I'm happy with this case. I forgive him. How it ended. But I never will forget. Uh, but more than anything, I'm happy that Renita Williams' mother has closure. He really wanted to plead guilty, but he's going to plead guilty to what I wanted him to plead guilty to. And he was going to have to accept the time that was going to be offered. No, it's not going to be any negotiation. Uh, either he was going to plead now or we would not entertain any other plea offers in the future. By the hands of a black district attorney in Shreveport by the name of James Stewart. So. In entering that plea deal, Robinson waives all rights to appeal. He will be immediately transferred to the State Department of Corrections. Anita Williams says today, after 10 months of walking a long road of pain and stress, her family can finally begin healing. Boy, if, I'm not saying she has closure, but she's on the road to closure. And now we also know that he'll be transferred likely to Angola down state. He's still housed for the time being in the cattle correctional facility here, Doug, Dom. So I think that's the most important thing throughout all of this. Uh, but anyway, um, I did find out something. I think I heard this radio interview uh, from, I guess this is a station called Keel. But anyway, I'm gonna play this. And uh, it's actually interviewing James Stewart after, um, after the case closed. So How are you this morning? morning? Okay, here we go. Cattle Parish District Attorney James Stewart is here. Welcome back to Keel Judge. James, how are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Let's start with the Jonathan Robinson case, if you don't mind. This is referred to in town as the Facebook killing. I saw it on a national news feed today. You um, and apparently the victim's family and, of course, the defense attorneys have agreed to a plea bargain. Tell me how y'all y'all came to the agreement. Well, in, in the course of, of discussing these cases with victims' families, you try to get an understanding of what their needs and wants are. The William family wanted closure, uh, and sometimes justice and closure is not the same thing at the same time. And so I knew in the back of my mind that uh, if there was an opportunity to plead the case, we might would take it. As you know, this defendant uh, came into court on several occasions and said he wanted to plead guilty. Uh, once he got uh, lawyers from the Capitol uh, people, uh, I simply told them if he was serious about it, uh, he had to plead to everything, and this is what he had to do, with, and he accepted. Your initial instinct, your initial inclination in this case, I think, was to seek the death penalty. Is that correct? Yes, and, and, and if he would not have said he wanted to plead guilty, I wasn't going to offer anything. I was going to uh, carry that case on. But as you know, death penalty cases take a while. And they can be kind of complicated and they can be expensive. So, uh, you know, I will consider not going forward under these circumstances. When a family, when it's a case like this where you legally think the death penalty is warranted, but the family that the victim's family says, look, we just want to wrap this up. If he wants to plead guilty, go to jail for life, no parole, we're good with that. Is, is do you or in a broader sense, to uh, do DAs in other parishes, counties, wherever, do you ever try to change their mind, or uh, what, what, uh, what? What is that give and take like? Well, I, I, I listen to them and I try to explain the process to them so they'll truly understand. I explain to them that that the executed anybody in the Cattle Parish since 1988, that there's a moratorium on death penalty right there because they don't have the drugs. I, tell, I try to tell them it's a long process. A lot of those families want to come to court. Uh, uh, as in the LaValle case, it just sometimes it's going to take go out. But, you know, we in cattle limit death penalty to the worst of the worst. And so once we define somebody as the worst of the worst, and I think that's a serious option, I want to make sure with the family. Now, some families are damn it one way or the other. They'll say, no, we don't care. We want death penalty. The other families say, no. For whatever reason, they don't want the death penalty, and they, they want to go the other way. And then I make a decision based on all the facts. But in this case, you didn't talk the Williams family into this. This they were they were good with this kind of from jump. 
yeah, my, my initial conversation with Miss Williams is, you know, it, it's really a tough conversation because she's raising, now she's going back from a, a grandmother to a mother that raised raise those kids, but I always want to know what their feelings are. I tell them what the possible penalties are, uh, particularly after the grand jury comes back, and I just uh, forget it, and she said... I forgive him, but I never will forget. She did not have to... Uh, have the death penalty, but it was, but that was my decision to seek the death penalty. I forgive him, but I never will forgive. In the Grover Cannon case, uh, it sounds like a judge has determined that they won't get a change of venue, but they will get a jury from outside of this area. Explain that process, how long that could take, and how it will work. Aaron, I'm going to do this. The, the, the recent death and publicity around the pain, unfortunate killing of Officer Payne has really complicated this matter to the point that I don't really want to make any statements whatsoever about the ballot. Uh, our goal is to get this, this case tried. And the second part of that, we're meeting later this morning to, to look at what we're going to do. But just generally, you have to reach out to other jurisdictions and find out when they have jury terms and if they will accommodate uh, you coming in and taking the jury. Uh, most of the times in most jurisdictions, uh, they, they, they will work with you. As in the Horn case that was tried in DeSoto where they had to go so what, uh, the Baton Rouge to pick it. So, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, they'll have places they want to go. We'll have places that we think might be, you know, good. And the judge ultimately makes that decision based on the research of who will accommodate us and how soon they can accommodate us. I had asked Aaron on the air earlier, and maybe, maybe you can clear this up a little bit. When you were looking at at possible areas, other parishes, districts, whatever it happens to be for an outside jury pool, do, do you have to do a lot of homework to determine that there has been no violence toward police in that specific area also, that because there's a concern that the defense lawyers in this case, the Cannon case, will use that against you also? Well, that, that is a concern, and I mean, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, there's been, uh, uh, in some places we've had that problem. All those are factors uh, that we consider in, in making that decision. And, and, and Judge Emanuel's done this before, and I have some seasoned people on my staff who've done it. So in the conversations, we'll reach somebody, and we, we, we just want to get this case set and dry.